Welcome everybody to the course on Dynamics and Control. My name is Pedro Alberto from the Polytechnic University of Valencia in Spain. And the topic of today is uh, the module uh, 5, Control Benefits. And in particular, we are going to consider um, those systems and those control systems where uh, control is uh, necessary. And as you remember, the modules of the course are uh, this uh, in the slide. And today, in the control benefits, we are going to consider the first uh, uh, conditions when the control is necessary. Later on, we will see the other uh, benefits of the control. <coughs> then, uh, <coughs> when are we going to use uh, control? We uh, need to use control when dealing with unstable plants, because we know that uh, it, this is a basic requirement for a system to be stable. We uh, need a control when we try to access to remote uh, processes because we cannot manipulate uh, locally. Then another option is to make uh, easy the work of the operators or to try to get uh, better performances, performance. And if uh, in the process there are disturbances, we use the control to cope with uh, these uh, unexpected disturbances. And also we will see that the uh, control will uh, favor uh, new uh, applications. So remember that when we have uh, uh, unstable plants uh, like this one, we are using the information, the feedback to generate the control and we want this uh, to be done uh, automatically and in such a way that the whole system is uh, stable. Then. Uh, we have seen some examples about uh, stabilizing unstable plants and in particular you remember probably the inverted pendulum that uh, we tried to keep in the upper position the pendulum uh, rotating in that case uh, the base or we can have the same problem a pendulum which is uh, of course uh, unstable again and is mounted uh, on a car and we try to move the car in such a way that the pendulum is in the higher position or uh, we may have uh, another kind of inverted pendulum, it's a very interesting one, the, what is called the uh, flywheel inverted pendulum and uh, you can see here that in the top uh, of the uh, pendulum there is a, a wheel which is rotating and just rotating this wheel in one or another direction you can keep the pendulum in the uh, higher uh, position, in the upper position. Well, uh, you can say that these are academic uh, applications, but uh, nowadays there is very popular uh, uh, transportation system, which is the Segway, and this Segway is nothing else than an inverted pendulum. You put here a, a person and is operating on this uh, uh, driver, uh, and then uh, you can uh, go forward, uh, backward, uh, rotating and so on, but of course you should keep in the upper uh, position, which is uh, unstable. Well, uh, I was tempted to present you some uh, videos about that, but uh, you can access and see as many times as you want in these uh, YouTube videos. There is uh, a very nice one for inverted pendulum, you have here, here the link, uh, but there are also in the same uh, web page many others, or you may have a, a look at another video for uh, moving a car to keep the pendulum in the inverted position or the same for the flywheel inverted pendulum or uh, for the Segway and in that case there are many funny uh, videos showing what uh, may happen if the control is not good enough. <coughs> we have seen that uh, <coughs> uh, some uh, systems could be stable by design but we force them to be unstable. This is the case, for instance, of a, a glider. Uh, the glider is a, an aircraft which is very stable, but uh, we can do little things with that. Uh, then if we want to, for instance, keep the aircraft in a fixed uh, position, then we need another design, the helicopter. But the helicopter is uh, unstable, so you should uh, introduce some uh, control actions in order to keep the helicopter in a position or to track a direction. This is not the case with the glider, which is just uh, flying uh, due to the uh, inertia and the uh, force of the wind and so on. 
Well, if you want more uh, activities, not just to keep or to make a, a short uh, displacement, then you have the, the commercial aircrafts. In that case, you can imagine that the system is uh, again unstable, but uh, you control it in such a way that the uh, trajectory, the, um, the way the, the aircraft is flying, is uh, stable. But if the aircraft is too stable, if you introduce too much control, then you can do, uh, you cannot do uh, uh, um, uh, turning or movements uh, in a very speed, uh, speedy way. And then if you design a, a fighter, a fighter is also an aircraft, which is of course uh, unstable, but uh, by design this aircraft is very much unstable. With a commercial aircraft, probably you can uh, fly without uh, any control action for some time. With a fighter, you cannot. But the main advantage is that being so unstable, you can uh, achieve very fast turning, very uh, quick uh, movements and so on. And then this is a very general uh, rule. Uh, you can say that the more stable the plant is, the lower performance can be achieved uh, by control. Remember the case of the bicycle. When uh, we design the, the bicycle, uh, the bicycle is unstable and we can stabilize the bicycle just adding some extra uh, wheels. But then in that case, we cannot control much. Even in that case, the controller is the human. Uh, the same with the aircraft, or if you consider an outboard boat, uh, if you compare an uh, outboard uh, boat with a transatlantic, of course the second one is much more stable, but uh, the trajectory, the speed, and so on, is uh, not comparable with the outboard boat. The outboard boat is not so stable, but then you can maneuver much uh, uh, quickly, and achieve better performance. We have seen also the example of the mechanical instability, the Segway, and you can see here in this figure that if we are designing the system in the, to keep in this position, this is stable, and then we don't need control. But if we want to keep the system in that position, then we need to have some control. So to operate a system in an unstable uh, position, we need to add some control. Uh, this was clear in the case of the Segway or also in the, any mechanical system, but it also happened in many other uh, systems. Let's uh, just have a look at the chemical reactor. If we have here a chemical reactor, we are introducing some reactive here, and there is some uh, chemical reaction here, uh, some uh, heat is produced and is uh, um, uh, uh, refrigerated by the water in the jacket of the reactor, and then you can control the level, the concentration, and the temperature. But uh, <coughs> if we analyze the behavior of this reactor, we can see that for the same uh, inflow of uh, material, we have three different uh, temperature uh, in the reactor. The P1 and P3, these two points, are uh, stable, but probably we need to work in that point, which is an unstable point, and then we need some uh, control to uh, bring the reactor to operate, to work in this, uh, under these uh, conditions. Well, uh, another kind of uh, situations where we need the control is when we have a teleoperation. For instance, uh, uh, we have this uh, system here and we want to control we have some information and we can enter some control, but this control is generated far away from the system. And then there is a network connecting the system, the process, and the control. Then, uh, in that case, this cannot be a human because it's uh, far away. And you can consider, for instance, the case of a remote uh, guidance. If we have this uh, robot, mobile robot, on the surface of the moon or uh, in a remote position, then we cannot uh, manipulate it and we should do that remotely. And that means that we need a control. 
Also, uh, we may have uh, guided surgery. Here there is the, the, the patient and there is uh, some equipment here trying to do some exploration or some surgery. And then the doctor is here and is manipulating uh, the joystick and is uh, controlling the different actions here. So in that case, the control is necessary because this person cannot be here or you, you can say that the work from here is much more precise and comfortable. <coughs> Another kind of situation is when you have a miniaturization. Uh, this is a typical uh, property of the servo systems. Uh, assume that you have a local process that you can manipulate, but this process is uh, um, of a size which is appropriate for you to uh, manipulate. Then you have another process which is a different scale, could be a miniaturized uh, one, I mean a, a very much more uh, uh, small, or could be a large one. Then anything you are doing here, due to this servo system and the remote connection, you can do the replicate the same activities here, uh, but in a scale uh, process. So uh, what have we seen today? We have seen some of the benefits of the control, but these are mainly related when we are dealing with uh, processes when a uh, control is necessary because we have some uh, plants that have been designed uh, in an unstable way because we can get better performance uh, like this or because there is a remote control uh, which is not directly uh, locally implementable by uh, humans. So what is next? As I said, we are going to be another benefits of the control. In particular, we will see uh, next uh, time uh, how we can improve the performance of the behavior of a system by using the control. And then uh, that's all uh, for today. Uh, thank you very much for your time.